Good morning, good morning, Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church family and friends. It's Pastor Rod here. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our time this morning. Father God, we we come humbly as we know how, Heavenly Father. Lord, we come thanking you for last night's lying down and this morning's early arising. Lord, we thank you for being God all by yourself, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we know that there's no other like you. You are the one and only God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your many, many mercies. Thank you for just being God. Lord, we come right now, Heavenly Father. I come as your servant today, Heavenly Father. Lord, not only as your servant, Lord, but as your child, Heavenly Father. Lord, I need your strength today, Heavenly Father. I need your strength to proclaim your word today, Heavenly Father. Lord, I can't do nothing without you, Lord. Lord, you know about this week, Heavenly Father. You know it's been tough, Heavenly Father, but Lord, you are still God. You are still good, and Lord, you are still able. Touch now, Master. Hide me behind your cross. Speak to me and through me, Lord, that we might be edified, but ultimately, Lord, that you will be glorified. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 John. 1 John, chapter number 1. 1 John, chapter number 1. 1 John, chapter number 1. When you find, when you find it, meet me at verse number 5. And when you find it, you'll find these words recorded. It says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Go back to verse number seven. It says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I want to speak for a few moments as the Holy Ghost shall guide from this thought. I want to talk about walk in the light. Walk in the light. I am often intrigued and somewhat inspired by the writings of the Apostle John uh, because he comes off as a modern day seminary professor. His writings are embedded with simple focus of attending to the doctrine of God. He doesn't have many parables in his writings. He is direct and solid. He's decisive and conclusive about, about taking his time to walk through and help us, help us, his readers, understand the theology of God. He centers it on this, this one premise that Jesus was not just the son of God, but he was both the son of God and God the son. According to the Trinitarian, uh, the Trinitarian doctrine, they all three in all, excuse me, the doctrine, they are three in one. All three of them are God. Yeah, that's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And John, in his writings, continue to echo his theological focus on the deity of Jesus Christ. And this letter, this letter that was written was actually considered as one of the general epistles, if you could believe that or not. It was considered as one of the general epistles. Actually, it picks up where he left off in the Gospel of John. Because John the Apostle wrote five books of the New Testament. He wrote the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Revelation. He wrote all five of the books and all of them are an attachment or a continuation of the previous thought or previous idea on theology. This gives us a powerful three word thesis and that is God is light. This text that you and I just read are, are, are the conditions and the benefits of abiding and walking in that light. So let us explore for a few moments this issue of God is light. Now watch this because 
John did not say that God is a light. He did not say that God is the light. He did not say God is like a light. He said very definitively that God is light. He helps us illuminate this thought to let us know that if we see God as light, it helps us better relate to him and it helps us better relate to others. Yes, yes. See, let me let me let me see if I can preach it where you can reach it. Uh, if, if, if all of the lights are cut off in your house or if all of the lights are cut off in a sanctuary, you will all sit in darkness. So what we should understand from the onset is that light brings illumination. God, therefore, being light, speaks to his illuminating power. And it also, when uh, when the lights are on in your house, you're able to see color, beauty, purity, and there is more comfortable, it's a more comfortable atmosphere when your light's on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, it's more comfortable when the lights are on than it is when you're in darkness. And anybody in their right mind don't just sit around in darkness and be comfortable. No, 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 no. You don't sit around in darkness and just be comfortable. If we could, if you cut off all the lights in your room, you and I would get an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah, yeah. You get uncomfortable real fast. So, so, so light brings illumination. It brings a sense of peace, a sense of contentment. God is the fountain of beauty, the illumination of joy and purity. That's why it is contradictory for you to say you know God and be evil. Because you cannot know God and be evil at the same time. No, no, no. It's contradictory to say that, that, that you know God and walk in an ugly spirit at the same time. No, no, no. You can't do that. It's contradictory to say to say you know God and be comfortable in darkness. Mm. You, you can't be, you can't say I know God, but I'm comfortable in dark thinking, dark action, pessimistic and negative all at the same time. God is not none of those things. And if we're going to walk in his light, we have to walk in beauty, purity, joy, knowledge, and illumination. Mm -hmm. oh, I wish I had somebody to help me today. Huh? Because watch this. You remember in the Genesis process of creation on day one, the focus on day one was to speak light into existence. Okay, all right. He said, let there be light. And by the end of that day, there was this creation called night and day. Okay, then on the fourth day of the creation project, he he, he, he installed a second set of lights called the sun, the moon, and the stars. Huh? The celestial lights who were there to measure seasons and signs and the measurement of time. Okay, walk with me now, walk with me. So so that we, so, so that, that we can uh, see about, uh, distinguish this thing about light is that even in the creation process, that even God doesn't want to work in darkness. God said light first, that light might be, bring order and illumination and a sense of direction. Then he sets light, lights to watch. Watch this, because if things are going to grow, they need light. Ah, ah. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me pause parenthetically and say this right here. Uh, uh, I, I know you know they might think this is taboo to talk about in church, but I'm going to talk about it because it's one of the biggest industries that's going on right now, even in the quarantine season. It's called cannabis. Okay, okay, for us old folks, it's, it's called cannabis. And, 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 uh, for us older generation, let me just let me, let me bring it home. It's called weed. The weed industry is one of the biggest industries that's going on, especially here in California. But watch this. Watch this. Even the weed seeds need light to grow. Even they need light to grow. Fruits seeds need light to grow. Everything. So 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 growth is 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 is, is, is synonymous with light. Because if you're gonna grow, you need to have some light. Okay, you and I are going to grow in the things of God. We need to make sure that we expose ourselves to the light of God's word. Uh, light is essential to both existence and to growth. But there's something to, uh, uh, so potent here in this context of verse number seven. Watch this. Because watch this. Verse five says God is light. And it says that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, it gives something interesting about this light stuff. Watch this. God is light. And then there's another he that is in the light. God is light. Then there's another he that is in the light. Okay, the reason why you might not understand it is because maybe you don't know who he is. So let's go back to John, to go back to the gospel of John. John chapter 1 will help us understand who he is. That light was introduced by John the Baptist. John chapter 1 verse 6 says, there was man who was sent from God whose name was John. Verse 7 says, he was not the light, 
but he came to bear witness to the light. Fast forward to John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus, after he had his dialogue with this adulterous woman who was called the adulterer, says, I am the light of the world. He says again in John chapter 9, verse 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then we get to 1 John chapter 1, and we can figure out who the he is in verse 7. Because verse 7 says, God is light. And there's another he who is in that light. It is Jesus. It is Jesus who is in the light of God. Watch this. So can I help you understand this? Watch this. That you will never fully understand God until you fully understand Jesus. You can't understand God if you bypass Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the actual revelation of God to humanity. Okay? Uh, let me, okay, once again, here's another part me pausing parenthetically. With all the stuff that's going on with this, uh, with the mask mandate and, and the vaccination and all that, with all that, with spend, let's, let me just stay right here with the mask mandate. Because you got folks who are walking around here talking about, oh, I ain't got to wear a mask and, and no, I'm, I'm a child of God and da 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 da. Okay, if you are a child of God, why, hear me now, if you are a child of God, if you are a child of God, the disciples, come here, child of God, come here, since you don't read the Bible, come here, the child of God, the Bible actually says, Bible actually says, when the disciples spoke to Jesus and asked Jesus about the taxation of Caesar, Jesus looked at them and said, render unto Caesar what belonged to Caesar. Did he not? So if the government is our Caesar, you got to render under Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And if Caesar says wear a mask, child of God, you wear a mask. It says wear a mask, it'll help prevent you from transmitting a disease or catching it or whatever it is. Child of God, be obedient and wear the mask. Child of God. So if you and I are going to understand God, we have to have a relationship with Jesus. Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father, God. No one gets to the Father but by me. <sighs> so, so let me let me, let me, let me say, uh, I'm not going to bore you with this sermon, even though you may be. But watch this. I kind of like preaching doctrinal sermon because every sermon is not designed to tell you that, that you're going to get a new car, you're going to get a new house, uh, a new prophecy, drop a few dollars and I'll make you holler. No, no, I, every sermon ain't directed to make you shout. Sometimes we just need to be taught. <sighs> Sometimes we need to get past uh, get past what God going to do for you and just appreciate what God who God really is. We ought to thank God that He called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Let's 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 just let's just stay right there. He could He could have left us and let us be uncomfortable in, in an uncomfortable state where we had no direction, no joy, no beauty, no peace. But God, but God cut the light on. He cut the light on. It maybe not yours, but He cut the light on in my darkness and brought me out of a dark place. And if you're gonna abide in the light. People don't, people don't like doctrinal sermons, but God is light. He's the absence of darkness. The, sex that, the, the text says that in him, there's no darkness at all. So if you get that, we, we can now see the conditions and the benefits of abiding in the light. Okay, so if you like the Bible, here's what the text says. If we abide in that light, walk, tread in that light, watch this, verse 7 says, we have fellowship one with another. If we abide in the light, Lord, hold your boy right here. God is light. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. That means, church, watch this, that God never intended for it to be just you and him. Uh, mm -hmm. Lord, deliver me from, from, from faith church folk who just want God but don't want anybody else. God deliver us from them good church folk who just want to show up on Sunday and give their little two two dollars and, and, and don't want to be bothered with anybody else. That's a lie from that's a lie from the pit of hell. Cause watch this, you can't have the head and don't want the body. God never intended for you to be just you and Him. No, nah, that's not how God made it up. No, 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 that's not how God created. Watch this, because when we walk in the light, the light of God, it help us to interact. Well with one another. 
or the opposite is when we are not interacting with one another, <laughs> we are lying about God, about having a relationship with God. Because God is not interested in just having a relationship with him and don't want to be involved with the body. Oh, watch this, because a recurring theme in the New Testament is this phrase, one another. Love ye one another. Pray for one another. Forgive one another. Long suffering with one another. Have fellowship with one another. You cannot have God and don't want to be bothered with the church. <sighs> you, you cannot just have God and not be bothered with the body. Mm -mm. No, no, no. That's anti-theological right there to everything that Jesus died for because God has other children. You're not an only child. <laughs> and to say you want God and don't want to be bothered with his children is to lie and say you're in fellowship with him. Okay, okay. I'm just going to preach it to myself. I don't know any parent, no, any parent out here who would want somebody that only want them but not their children. No, no. Talk, talk this thing, Holy Ghost. Because that's a package deal. No, no, no. If you want to be bothered with me, you got to be bothered with me and my children. You got to be bothered with me and everything that comes with it. And, and church, watch this. That, 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 that's the persuasion of God. God wants us in fellowship, not just with him, but also with one another. Communion with the saints. Mm. Here's the B clause of verse 7. Because my soul gets excited right here. Watch this. He says, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. I know y'all did, did, didn't read it right because if you read it right, you would got it, you'd get happy right here because watch this. If you got, if you got the King James Version, it says, it says, cleanseth. If you translate it, it translates to this. Watch this. Translate to the present tense and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses Still don't, you still don't know when to shout. It cleanses. I'm trying to tell you when you read that, that wasn't talking about Jesus dying on the cross and you getting saved. No, 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 no. That, 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 that's for all of us uh, who have sinned after being saved. So that ain't just for you folks who just who just believe that Jesus died on the cross and you got saved at one time and you ain't sinned no more. No, 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 no. I ain't talking to y'all because I don't even know who y'all is. But to those of us who got saved by Jesus and still sinned afterwards, it said cleanses. It's a continuation of cleansing. Ah, I, I knew y'all be acting funny up in there because because y'all don't nobody know that you you still got some sin in you. <laughs> but the next verse says, if you say you have no sin, <laughs> you lie. So let me talk to the real folks who would testify even after you got saved, even after you got baptized, after you got filled with the Holy Ghost, after you joined the ministry, after you started walking in your calling, you still cussed somebody out. You still said some stuff you had no business saying. You still went to some places you had no business going. But thanks be to God that the blood of Jesus still works. It wasn't just on Calvary, but it's still flowing today. Ah, y'all, I wish I had somebody here and I'll tell you, tell you neighbor, ain't nobody got time for fate to be fake today. No, no, too many people are coming and going. Too many people are dying. Too many, yeah, it's time to tell the truth and stop being fake. Mm. Sometimes I've been struggling to praise him because I've been weighed down by sin. Ah, but I dare you today to ask God to cleanse you. Ask him to cleanse you. Thanks be to God that the blood still works. It's still cleansing. Ah. Mm. See, 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 since you're still acting funny, watch this. Sometimes plans are delayed <laughs> because the because watch this. The need there need to be some 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 cleansing going on. Huh? Watch this, watch this, because watch this. Sometimes there are airplanes uh, that are delayed because there's some this thing called de-icing. Because it's too cold. For, for the plane to take off or it's, it, it iced and freezed over the plane. Sometimes planes can't take off because they need to be de-iced. It means they were sitting too long where they were the night before. And they had some buildup from the night before and they were delayed because they couldn't take off the next morning. Some of y'all, some of us are grounded because we, <laughs> we got some stuff that built up last night. 
Mm -hmm. And we stayed in one place too long. And we need to ask God to de-ice us. Ah, so we can take off. Watch this. Watch this. Thanks be to God that the blood still works even after we got saved. Ah, and see, see, watch it. Watch this. I don't know who I'm talking to because I struggle with fake people. Because I don't know what you did the week before or what, or what you're going to do the week after you that you should have took off right there. Watch this. Because you already know there's some stuff you can't say in church. But if God woke you up this morning, let, let me let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me 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 let me, let me just go on, be transparent right now. I, I those who know know. Those who don't know, I'm, I'm about to tell you. I've been struggling these last few days since my boy Reverend Shaki Moore passed. I've been struggling the past few days with this. I, I, I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all, but I get I get real. I get real when I talk to God. I, I get real. I get real because uh Shaki had had, had, had had concurrent strokes. I mean, he had a stroke last year. He had a stroke last year. Early last year he had a stroke. But he was recovering. He was recovering. He stayed in the hospital almost a month. He was recovering. And then when he got home, he was he was still in recovery. He started doing physical therapy and, and things were going good. They were going good. It was going good. He was about to start speech therapy and he was doing good. He was on the road to recovery. He was doing good. Oh, when, 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 when there was a video of him getting out the wheelchair and he started walking, he was doing good. He was doing good. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he was just, he had another one and he didn't wake up. And I had to ask myself. I had to ask myself. I was struggling, struggling. I went. I didn't. I didn't doubt God no one time. I know God don't make no mistakes. No God don't make no mistakes. But there are times when I had to ask God, why, Lord? Why? Why? Forty-seven years old. Why, God? But then God had to show me there are some things we 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 we. You you think you know somebody? And there's some things that you don't know, but that God knows. God knows the relationship he had with Shaki. Huh? I only know from, from my point of view, from, from me and Shaki talk, me and, and our friendship. But God, that was God's chap. And if God saw him in pain, God saw him struggling, God saw his things that I couldn't see. God saw him and didn't want his child in no more pain. So God called him home. And who am I to question God when it comes to his child? God, God, give me your strength, Lord. Give me your strength to deal with the decision you made about my brother, your child. Because, Lord, I'm your child. Maybe, just maybe, you left me here to continue on from my brother. Continue on preaching for my brother. Continue on walking in my calling. Continue on walking in your light. Huh? So God says, I de-iced you, Roger, this morning for you to continue. So you can get up out your bed and preach the Lord's word because my blood still works. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm a saint with sinner tendencies. Don't play like you don't have me either. Don't play like you don't have me. Because if you say that you have no sin, this is what the text says. You a lie and the truth ain't in you. But thank God I got up today. I thank God that I didn't lose my mind these past few weeks, even though I was struggling. I thank God he didn't kill me in my sleep. <sighs> I thank God that he breathed the breath of life in me one more time. It may have been a struggle to get out of bed, but the Lord still allowed me to get up. And I can say that it was the blood. It was the blood that still cleanses. It's the blood that still works. It was the blood for me. Because one day when I was lost, he died on the cross. So I know it was the blood for me. 
And I don't know about y'all, but I'm from the old school and the old folks say it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. But here it is. It'll never lose its power. It'll never lose its power. The blood still works. The blood still cleanses. It's still cleansing. Walk in the light as God is the light. But here's another kicker. Jesus is also in that light. Thank you, Deacon Ward, because you had to remind me. You had to remind me that God never leaves and he never forsakes me. Y'all, see, I don't know. I don't know how y'all think all these preachers just got everything all together. Like we don't have feelings and we don't have emotions and, and, and we, we, we don't go through it. And sometimes even a preacher, no matter how much anointed you is, how much filled with the Holy Ghost you are, sometimes you need to be reminded that God is still God. God is still God. Thank you, brethren, for praying for me and, pre and, and pushing pastor to continue all walking in the light of the God. Bless you. I love your brothers. Love all your brothers. Pray for me. Pray for me. It's still tough for me. But pray for me. Pray for me. As I said, Shaki was my boy. He was my friend. He was my friend. We didn't have to talk every day. But every time we did talk, we picked up right where we left off. That was my boy. To uh, Sister Fia Moore, his wife, to his kids, his mom and pop. Man, you got my sincere condolences from Pastor Bates and the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church family. Man, we love y'all. We praying for you. I know this is a tough time, but we praying for you. God is able. God is able. God is able. Let's continue to pray for Brother Marshall, Sister Heidelberg. Let's, let's, let's pray for uh, Sister Heidelberg and her family. Let's let's pray for uh, Brother Armstrong and his family. God bless you, Brother Armstrong. Thank you too, sir, for for praying and pushing past him. Uh, Deacon Aramis, bless you, man. Bless your nephew. Love you, man. Uh, Brother West, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, of course, my dad. Dad always pushes me. Uh, but let's keep mom and pop in prayer. Let's keep everybody in prayer. Uh, God is good. God is good in spite of everything that's going on, in spite of... Uh, the virus still here, death still on, on folks' doorstep. God is still good. God is still God. God is still God. And sometimes you just need to be reminded that God is still God and he is still able. So I love you. I love you, church. I love your family. And man, uh, if you ain't told, told your family and those close to you that you love them, it, it, it's time now. You, you gotta tell them because uh, tomorrow's not promised, and you don't know you don't know the day or the hour that God gonna call you. So tell your folks you love them. Why why they still here? There's this, that old song, give them their flowers while they're still alive. This is the time to give folks their flowers. Give them their flowers. I love y'all. God bless you. Pray for me as I pray for you, and let's watch God change things. This your boy Pastor Bates. I'm out.